Welcome to your weekly astrology overview and zodiac forecast for week commencing the 17th of June. I'm going to share with you to begin with what we can all collectively relate to and it is a big week with the summer solstice but please stay with me. I will explore each of the 12 signs from Aries through to Pisces in great depth and share what you can expect in terms of your ascendant, sun or the moon. I'm astrologer Patrick Arundel. If you're new here, it's great to have your company. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please help it to grow and click that subscription button, but also the bell notification symbol. If you're a returning visitor, all your views and interactions are truly appreciated. I am a consulting astrologer. If you'd like to have a one-to-one -one with me, please check out my testimonials below. I don't edit these. As they come in, I share them exactly as people have experienced. Also, if you'd like to get your free written daily horoscope fired to your device each morning, please see the subscription link below. I also provide the overarching astrological feature of each day so we can get the big picture as well as relate, relate to our particular zodiac sign. If you're a patron, thank you so much for all your support. There's going to be much more content coming your way. If you do choose to have a one-to-one -one with me, you do get 20% off by being a patron. And finally, if you would like to ascend above the zodiac astrology and embrace the magic of natal astrology, if you check out my packages below, there's 30% off and give you an enormous amount of information to guide you. If you know your tropical natal astrology, why not check out my draconic package? That's your soul or karmic energy. Truly fascinating stuff please see the link below for more. So on the screen now, I'm showing the event chart right at the start of the week. And there's a magical connection on Monday between Mercury and Venus in Gemini. The reason it's magical is because of the role of Mercury being in its home sign of Gemini. And that combination is great to articulate our ideas, but also of course with Venus in the mix, our uh, affections, but Venus can be about money. So if we are really excited about a concept, it does suggest we have a real chance to uh, articulate that in a powerful way, or does it? Because Neptune this week is continuing to be very powerful indeed. It squares up to both Mercury and uh, Venus in Gemini, but also it's square into the sun right through this week. Neptune's in the sign of Pisces on the anoretic degree, that's 29 degrees. So it's going to go into Aries next year briefly, but if we think that Neptune's journey is 160 years through the heavens, the fact that it's in the sign of culmination, Pisces, the last zodiac sign, it is asking us to do some soul searching. So as much as we think and we can be quick and very relatable with the Gemini energy, that Neptunian energy is asking us to stay in touch with our subconscious. But later on, on Monday, this magical duo moves together into the sign of Cancer. Now, Mercury in Cancer is not so good because Mercury relies on being very precise, whether it's through its rulership of Gemini or uh, Virgo, that clarity comes from being more detached and crisp. So the water of Cancer can diminate that a little bit. But because Venus is alongside, the magic that they share in Gemini moves into Cancer. And of course, Cancer is the sign of feeling. It's ruled by the moon. It's very much about uh, the emotional component. So as much as we've had some very bright and breezy uh, opportunities in the early part of June, particularly with the Sun and Venus being in such an extended conjunction within three degrees, now we're being asked to dissect the conversations in terms of how it actually feels in a more sensory way. So getting together with loved ones or people that we feel really safe with, opening up about how we feel about things, all can become themes in this 
cancer season week and then on Thursday we have the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere and the winter solstice in the south but astrology is a Mediterranean construct so it is based on the seasons and the first part of the astrological year is triggered by the vernal equinox in spring so this second uh, event brings in cardinal quadrant two so over the next 13 weeks it's all about uh, security stability the atmosphere very cancerian and the sun returning home here but also meeting with uh, mercury and venus amplifies the brilliance of this particular summer solstice so i think it's really encouraging us all to think about uh, what gives us sucra from an emotional viewpoint rather than being uh, avidly attached to all that information that's pouring into our senses all the time we're being asked to perhaps have a little bit more space to let it all percolate through us and really sort out the wheat from the proverbial chaff but then by saturday the sun forges quite a tricky angle with pluto exactly this is a quincunx Pluto in its retrograde in Aquarius, it's very detached in the air sign of Aquarius, but it's very much about the big picture. But Cancer is more about our immediate environment, how we feel about things. And of course, it's important to feel comfortable. So if there are friendships, for example, that don't feed in to our sense of security, they could be highlighted by that particular aspect. But also on Saturday, we have the Capricorn full moon. A full moon is when the moon and the sun are in opposition. The luminaries, if we think about it, the sun lights up the day, the moon lights up the night, particularly on the full moon. The luminaries are very, very important. So when they're in opposition, 180 degrees on a polar axis, they're not actually integrated. Also, the moon in Capricorn is at its weakest point in its journey because it's known as being in detriment here because it's opposite the sign where m the moon rolls. But this is where Neptune really shows its hand because being so late in the sign of Pisces and the full moon being so early in the sign of Capricorn, we have a T-square. So ordinarily, the Capricorn full moon is very much about work-life balance. So our life very much Cancer, work very much Capricorn, because Capricorn is the sign of where we connect to the wider world. It is about property, it is about jobs, it is about uh, the structures of things. And because the sun wants us to be in touch with how it feels, the moon is resisting this. It's uh, asking us to feel more conscious of the value of status and our jobs and those uh, more tangible things. And because Neptune is feeding into them, if we have any discussions whatsoever, it's going to be more difficult to feel grounded or to get to a meaningful position. So there could be some confusion this week, despite the fact that we are being urged to tune in to our sixth sense, our intuition, uh, be much more conscious of where we spend time, whether it's in nature, whether it's in our homes. Our homes themselves can obviously be a hive of activity with uh, three uh, key players in the sign of Cancer and that full moon offers a challenge, reminding us that whatever we want to do, uh, to perhaps retreat a little bit, heal, have some time out, there are going to be some worldly considerations. Now please stay with me as I go through each of the 12 zodiac signs from Aries through to Pisces. Welcome Aries to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 17th of June. On the screen now I'm showing the event chart right at the start of the week. The big takeout is the fact that the Sun in Gemini is forging a perfect alliance with the Moon in the sign of Libra, which for you is where we relate. So your conversation could be bright and bubbly as you go into this week. Also, the combination of Mercury and Venus can be utterly charming. But we do just need to be mindful of the role of Neptune. You can see Neptune just tucked up in House 12 along with the stern Saturn. Neptune applying to Mercury and Venus almost exactly as we go into this new week 
suggest that somehow or another our subconscious can be very powerful. So even if you're having some kind of bright interaction with someone that you're drawn to or you're talking to someone about a business opportunity, it just may be the case that something is not being quite revealed that may actually be very important. Now it's also the case that that might not be so at all and everything could be tickety-boo but just be conscious that there may be something in the background in the ether that could influence our communication and create a little bit of distortion despite the magic that mercury and venus in gemini can bring and the sun's fine link to the moon now as the day goes on on monday both Mercury and Venus travel into the sign of Cancer. If you have been uh, discussing anything to do with a home change, whether it's actually moving, uh, doing some physical improvements, or perhaps starting to work from home, or you've got people uh, arriving back from college or going off to college soon, there's going to be a, quite a lot of activity over the next month in terms of where you live. But also the fourth house is very much connected to our inner world. So wherever we are in terms of our physical location, we still have our feelings and they're in our tummies, really. And our emotions are really evoked by this week's events. And if there is something you want to say to someone that is more heartfelt, certainly Mercury and Venus can help you to do that. But again, it is just being aware, even when they move into Cancer later on Monday, of that role of Neptune, which can just make it a little bit difficult to be absolutely certain of our hunches. However, as you go into this new week, you can see that your ruler, Mars, continues its journey in the sign of Taurus, which very much to do with everyday money, self-worth and values. But fortunately, it has moved forwards from that very difficult right angle that it had with Pluto last week. In fact, it's in a semi-sextile to the planet of fortune, Jupiter. So if you can be really clear and meaningful and compelling in the way you express your ideas, it could be good for you financially as this week goes on. But at the heart of this week, we have the summer solstice on Thursday. The Sun returns to Cancer for the first time in 11 months. And as I mentioned in the overview, the summer solstice is very much based on the Western tropical astrological calendar. But in the Northern Hemisphere, it will be the winter solstice. So what is a solstice? It's a staging point, a point when we can think about things more deeply, particularly because of the Cancer dimension. Now that's going to be particularly intense, as I mentioned, over the next four weeks, but it's also going to be powerful for the next 13 weeks too. So even if you don't see things moving quite as quickly as you would like, in terms of relocation, home improvements, redecoration, new addition to the family, uh, perhaps uh, some kind of reunion with people that you're close to, keep the faith, there's loads of time yet for things to evolve as you want. But that brings us to the Sun forging a very tricky link to Pluto. Pluto's been pushing you, particularly since the 21st of January, to think extremely carefully about your long term, but also about your associations. It could be that some friendships have been making way. But what this particular event can do is see you unsure on some of those future plans you've got. So the best way to divine this, to be honest, Aries, is to tune into your hunches. But that's why Neptune can be such a mischief maker this week. Because by the time we get to the full moon on Saturday, in the earthy practical sign of Capricorn, Neptune's really applying its might once more. So this is a week when we do need to have discussions, get in touch with how we feel, but I feel analyze the information that we're told. So if someone shares something about a business prospect, for example, don't necessarily dive into it too rapidly. Just give yourself the time to contemplate. And by the time you do get to that full moon at the end of the week, if something is a little bit out of kilter, so if you're spending too much time 
in terms of work and obligations and commitments, this is a great opportunity to perhaps throttle back and have more time resting, um, meditating on what you really want in your inner world. But if the converse is true, you need to connect with the wider world and interact more. That's what this particular full moon may throw up. But it's the information that you need to check out because Neptune can be quite distorting throughout this week. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Have a great week, Aries. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please help it grow and do so now. Welcome, Taurus, to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 17th of June for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now, I'm sharing your event chart right at the start of the week, which gives us some very important pointers, not least your ruler Venus is coming to the end of its journey through the sign of Gemini, which can be about sparkling conversations. But for you, the conversations may have been a lot to do with money. And Mercury, the ruler of that sign, is so close to Venus, they come into an exact unison on Monday, which could be exciting. So some good financial news could start this week. But just be aware that Neptune, the planet of dreams, is squaring up this duo. And Neptune's in a very idealistic part of your chart. So if you are discussing a loan, a contract, it's very important that you retain a very grounded and earthy part of your nature. You're applying that to the equation. But later on, on Monday, both Mercury and Venus move into the sign of Cancer, which is about feelings. But for you, it's going to see a speeding up. There's going to be an acceleration this week. That's actually going to be quite exciting, but you can't rush conversations, I don't feel, around your worldly interactions. And the reason for that, Taurus, is that Pluto, the planet of transformation, of power, is in a very dominant part of your chart. You can see right up there on that 10th house cusp. And Mercury and Venus almost immediately come into what's known as a quincunx with Pluto on Thursday with the summer solstice and the sun traveling into Cancer. The sun also starts to get into that relationship too. What does it mean? A quincunx is 150 degrees. Because the collective that's entering Cancer is about feeling but also expressing your ideas quicker, you just need to be aware that if you rush an important conversation, particularly around a professional matter, it may turn out that you're not going to be perceived in the way you quite want. So just managing your dialogue, planning the discussion, making a list of what's really essential to say is going to be part of the formula that will work for you. But the summer solstice is such an important day on Thursday because Western tropical astrology is based on the seasons, not in terms of the Earth's tilt, its relationship to the constellations of birth. And therefore, the Sun's move here brings in a 13-week period when you can be thinking very much about your communications to people. But also it has to feel right because that's what Cancer is about. But it's a passionate sign. It's very much about leadership. And if you've got ideas that you want to share with people, expect to be very busy over the next few weeks. Which brings us to the full moon on Saturday. This is in the sign of Capricorn. Opposes the sun. The moon in Capricorn is its most vulnerable position. It's detrimented here. It's possible, therefore, that something you want to talk about, about opening up your world in some kind of exciting way, perhaps a travel plan, there may be somebody close to you who's not quite as invested in what you would like from the situation as you would like. But you could be quite surprised about what their objections are. So there could be a conversation, if it doesn't occur at the end of this week, it could occur over the following two weeks, which just is a little bit of a surprise. So something that may not be obvious at the present time could come into the open. And maybe someone's been holding some information, not necessarily in a sinister way, perhaps they've been a little bit reticent about airing how they feel, but it could come out. So do expect some uh, intense conversations from the weekend onwards for the following fortnight. But this is a week for sure when you can use your communicational skills to good effect 
It is important that you're realistic because of the role of Neptune and just be aware of what the expectation is of anyone that you're discussing things with, particularly if your ideas are more um, a more cutting edge, they're fresher, they're different. You may have to deal with this rather stodgy person who wants to keep things as they were. Or is it your own reticent to changing your interaction with the world that you may need to challenge? Have a great week, Taurus. Thank you so much for joining me. If you've yet to subscribe to the channel, please do so now. Welcome Gemini to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 17th of June for the Ascendant, Sun or the Moon. On the screen now I'm showing the event chart right at the start of the week. We have a gorgeous link between your ruler Mercury and Venus on Monday in your sign. Gemini season has been so sparkly this year because we've also had Venus in occupation but critically Jupiter, a once in a 12 year event. Now, also last week we had the uh, Mercury Kazemi, but that was compromised by the energy of the dreamy drifting Neptune. And so it is as we come into this new week. But if you've got a real clarity of purpose, you know exactly what you want to achieve and you're not being affected by any outside influence or anyone's doubting of what you're trying to achieve, Something can crystallise at the start of the week creatively, which can give you a lot of a sense of excitement. But also, even by the end of Monday itself, there could be a key piece of financial good news. If you don't get it straight away, don't worry, you soon will. But it's just that if you're relating to someone uh, in a professional situation that you don't know very well. So for example, if you're negotiating a contract, it's vital that you get this scrutinized by a trusted friend or perhaps someone more formally to ensure that what's being dissected really works for you. But later on, as they move into Cancer on Monday, they do come into conflict with Pluto. So Pluto is the planet of transformation, but it's also the planet of power and it can, of course, be to do with coercion, can be to do with leverage. Um, but for you in House 9, higher truths. And if you recall, last week it clashed in a very potent way with Mars right at the start of the week. Something may have come up last week that was really quite tricky. In fact, last week, Gemini, I think, was quite a tough one. But as you go into this new week, Mars has moved forwards from Pluto and applies to Jupiter, which is a very dynamic link. Someone from your past or an old skill and a talent that you're redeploying in a fresh way can work out spectacularly well this week, but you need to be open to new knowledge and ways of doing things. And that's where Pluto comes in. So Pluto can be about change and transformations, but just be aware if you are doing anything that is contractually based, with a financial component that it is really audited and checked in a way that's totally satisfactory to you. Pluto brings power, Neptune brings the potential for a little bit of lack of clarity. Now as the week goes on, on Thursday we have the summer solstice. The sun arrives back in Cancer. Western tropical astrology is based on the season. So if you're down south and it's the winter solstice, uh, I hope that it's not too cold yet, but what it means in terms of the astrology for us all, the world over, the next 13 weeks, for, for in, in your case in particular, is asking you to think about the emotion of money, so the emotion of security. We all have a need to be secure, but also we need to feel secure about our values. It's not just about uh, the hard cash, it's about how things feel. So do we feel valued? Do we feel validated in what we do? So those are the existential questions you could ask yourself over that next 13 week period, but particularly over the next four weeks. However, the sun by now is also aligning to Pluto, just like Mercury and Venus did earlier in the week. So the second house, is an earthy area. It may be hosted by cancer, which is about feelings, but for you, it's earthy. The ninth house is more idealistic. There may be something that comes up that gives you an opportunity, and you may have a judgment call to make, and that will cr crystallize by the time of the full moon, which occurs on Saturday. This full moon 
goes across your second and eighth house polarities. But Neptune in house for you, house 10, but nearly on the 11th cusp, that is influencing this. So if you are talking about money or you're trying to make some economies or squeeze more out of your budget, or if you've got savings and resources, trying to use them in a more enterprising way, Capricorn, very much about the physical world, you have to make sure it feels right, the Cancer Sun, but also it's practical in terms of your everyday resources. And don't be too idealistic. That's Neptune, but just on that 11th house cusp, as it is on the 29th anoretic degree. But I think that this week can be much more progressive than last week in a way. Last week created a lot of potential for misunderstandings, distortions, low energy, just feeling a little bit overwhelmed. This week, traction comes. It won't be perfect, but traction is there. And that combination of Venus and Mercury and Mars and Jupiter can both be really fortunate if you really go for it. Have a great week Gemini. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel please help it grow and do so now. Welcome Cancer to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 17th of June for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now, I'm showing the event chart right at the start of the week. As ever, we need to be mindful of your ruling planet, the moon. The moon's in the sign of balance, Libra. So we'd all like balance in our lives. Sometimes it can be a little bit unattainable. But having the moon in the sign of Libra at the start of this week for you it's very evocative in terms of your immediate emotional environment and it does link back to the sun in your 12th house which is deeply reflective in a beautiful way so you may have come to some important positions on quite a few strands maybe some very sensitive strands that have been evolving in quite a big way right through the start of june the sign of gemini has a reputation of being very bubbly interactive and communicative and you may have been communicating, but I feel it's been communications with meaning. Because for you, they're all in house 12. That collective of Jupiter, the Sun, Mercury and Venus. And house 12 is where we heal. But it can be where we just need a little bit more solitude. It can be where we think about things very profoundly. But also it can be where we have separations. Because the 12th house is the sector of culmination. It's where things are finalizing for us. So there may have been some very deep stuff going on, particularly around relationships. If you have felt hugely nostalgic for someone from your past, it wouldn't be a surprise. If you've had some very vivid dreams and memories coming up, it wouldn't be a surprise. But in any horoscope, the most important player is always the planet right at the top of the chart and in your case that is Neptune. Neptune in your sister water sign of Pisces has been in in that sign since 2012 and has probably brought a lot of enrichment in terms of your emotional and spiritual world and understanding. Huge amount of knowledge but it is going to move next year into Aries ending a 160 degree cycle. And so for us all, collectively, we're being asked to think about our connectivity to one another, the meaning of our lives. Neptune is a shimmering, sometimes imperceptible, but hugely powerful influence. And it is clashing with both Venus and Mercury on the first day of this week. So for you, House 9 can amplify your feelings. So around any kind of relationship, it could be around a family tie, it could be around a friendship or a romantic uh, involvement. Whatever you're feeling, the chances are you're going to be feeling it in a very powerful way. But if it's a good feeling, that can be very enriching. If there's a sense of loss or the memories coming up point towards a time that was different, better, more fulfilling, you are going to feel that very vividly. But also, Cancer, you're going to move into your own power very rapidly because later on on Monday, both Mercury and Venus move into your sign. That's a great development. This joint ingress is relatively uncommon 
And Mercury in your sign is asking you to move into the moment in your thinking. Uh, it could be that an idea that's been building up on the back burner in recent weeks can now start to dart around in your consciousness. But Venus moving into your sign is wonderful if you want to think about giving yourself some kind of uh, dynamic makeover. We all like to have a change of, of approach, even if we're a dedicated follower of fashion, and that can give us a sense of freshness. So there is a fresh energy developing in your situation as Monday goes on. But it's going to gain traction because on Thursday, the sun moves back into your sign for the first time in 11 months. But what's critically important about this is it also ushers in the second cardinal quadrant. Western tropical astrology has four quadrants of 13 weeks. The second one is very much about our environment. It's about how we feel. So it's very much in keeping with the value of your sign. You're also a cardinal sign, a leader sign. Yes, you're ruled by the moon, which makes you very empathetic, but you're also brilliant at managing anything. So you're going to come out of the cocoon that's been quite powerful in recent weeks, or the heightened sense of sensitivity, which has been palpable, and feel a lot more rugged and a lot more robust to deal with life's stresses and strains. So if you have felt quite vulnerable recently, you're going to feel much more strength coming into your energy banks this week. But Venus and Mercury early in the week, and then the Sun, all clash with Pluto. And Pluto's in the part of your situation with where you're deeply invested, whether it's a job you have, whether it's a partnership, whether it is your personal finances or long-term investments that you've got, it can work that investment in the practical, tangible way as well as emotionally. But the first house is very much about us as individuals. Balancing first and eighth house energy, particularly when Pluto's in the mix, is not an easy hoe because Pluto comes with some demands. Um, certainly in terms of other people, if you're wanting to break free from something, for example, perhaps a relationship which has run its course, don't necessarily think that the other person's going to give you your release easily. There could be some politics. Or if you work in an environment where it's just too demanding and you decide you're going to look for another job or you start your own business, that can all be really exciting, but the exit may not be entirely tranquil. Just bear it in mind. And that's going to be underlined by the full moon in your opposite sign of Saturday. When the moon, your ruler, goes opposite your sun, she's in her weakest position. But Neptune also applies to this event. And it could be that someone's going to accuse you of being too single-minded, wanting everything too much on your terms. Have they got a point? You may need to consider this, but because Neptune's so late in the sign of Pisces, we're getting, almost for you, a 10th house energy, how you connect to the wider world and how that influences your relationships. So I think it could be a professional situation as much as a personal one, or it could be about who gains the upper hand, who's having the final say in a personal relationship. And if there is some uncertainty, or you feel someone's not very clear with you, or someone feels that you're not very clear, or someone seems unavailable or evasive, those can be the issues that you may need to grapple with as this week draws to a close. But sometimes in life, Cancer, we have to decide that we are going to reclaim our power. And I want to make you aware of the role of Mars, because Mars is very much about our individuality. And for you, it's in the 11th house, which is good for networking and being collaborative. But it's also about your future, your long-term future. And Mars last week was afflicted badly by Pluto. So I think you may have experienced some heavy politics at the start of last week. As this week begins, Mars forges a much more beneficial link to Jupiter. So something around what you sense that's to do with your future and your connections, let that guide you. But if you do feel that you need to reclaim that power, be more single-minded and not necessarily be so availing to fitting into what other people want, you'll, you'll need to recognise that and respect it, even if the transition to gain that uh, authority or autonomy is going to be a little bit political. I hope you have a great week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you've yet to subscribe to the channel, 
please do so now. Welcome Leo to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 17th of June for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now I'm sharing your event chart which gives us some important information right at the start of the week, not least your ruler the Sun continues its journey at this part of the week in the bubbly 11th house very much about sociability connections to others but also your long-term planning but jupiter's there as is the sparkling combination of mercury and venus which becomes exact on monday so something around alliances that you've been working hard on in the early part of this month could reach a high point at the start of this week but it's an interesting week, Leo, because if we think about uh, the position of the sun at the start of the week and the position of the moon, the two luminaries, they're perfectly aligned. So if you need to have a meaningful conversation with someone where you really do have that accord, it could be powerful and even to the point of having a major impact on your life direction. But equally, this week then becomes much more sensitive because later on on Monday both Mercury and Venus move into Cancer the sign of feeling but for you the 12th house this is where we can withdraw a little bit certainly reflect on what's occurred in the previous 12 months but just as they move they are still being afflicted potentially by the energy of Neptune. Neptune is one of the trickiest players in the planetary collective because it can be where we reach into the best part of ourselves, but it also can be where we can experience the most confusion. We can even have that confusion to the point we totally kid ourselves around the reality of things, or we can encounter someone who's not very honest, even to the point of being deceptive. So if you are forging alliances that have any kind of financial or business component to them, however promising they look, do proceed with a little bit of caution. Now, if you recall, at the start of last week, Mars was in a mighty battle with Pluto. And maybe is there was some kind of clash of wills between you, a line manager, someone who works for you. Perhaps you felt thwarted when, it's come to your, when it comes to your ambitions because you haven't felt that your voice was heard. But you know, as this week begins, Mars has moved away from that square with Pluto and actually forges a very constructive link with Jupiter, the planet of growth. And your confidence, your leadership skills can be decisive at the start of this week as long as you're clear about the money. So Neptune is a planet that you're going to have to grapple with all this week. But in truth, Pluto is very influential too. No longer in that clash with Mars, but it does forge a quincunx with Mercury and Venus as they move into Cancer later on Monday. What does this mean? Well, a quincunx is 150 degrees. In an opposition, it's obvious, as we have with the full moon on Saturday, that the sun and the moon are opposing one another, so they're not integrated. With a square, we're at right angles. That, where does that saying come from? So I was at right angles uh, with somebody. But with a quincunx, it's not quite as obvious. It's a more nuanced uh, difficulty to achieve a unification of the two energies. So Pluto is in house seven, but is the planet of power and transformation. So big relationship shifts are going on through to the first day of September, and then they will resume from the 20th of November when Pluto returns to Aquarius. Because on uh, the 1st of September and on the 2nd in America, he returns back into the sign of Capricorn for one final visit in our lifetimes. So that energetic dimension around relationships is very potent for you. But having Mercury and Venus move into the 12th house is the tenderest part of their journey. When Venus moves into the 12th house, relationships can sometimes end. But relationships only end if they're not meant to be in our lives long term. So a strong relationship won't be affected. But it could mean that maybe we're going to think more deeply about that connection. Or we want a more spiritual connection with the person. And that could be what we crave for. But that 12th house energy amplifies 
where you feel less certain, where you feel raw, where you could feel insecure or vulnerable. So if there's a relationship in your world, professional, friendship, uh, or to do with a romantic tie, where you don't feel completely confident and sure of how the other person feels, that can be really highlighted this week. I just need to be really honest about that because by the time the sun moves with the summer solstice on Thursday into Cancer, bringing more Cancerian energy into play, that too clashes with Pluto, it reaches a peak on Saturday when the quincunx is pretty well exact. And that dynamic of maybe having to uh, protect your boundary with Pluto when you could feel more in the mood to just step back a little bit and move back into your own space could take some doing. And then on Saturday too, we have the full moon. Now this full moon is probably one of the toughest of the whole year for you personally, to be honest. Although the moon rules the sign of Cancer, it's actually in the sign opposite Cancer where it's detrimented, Capricorn. Here for you, that's about harsh realities, you know, things that are very much to do with daily routines, which could be to do with your home. For example, if a lot of stuff's got put off, this full moon would be a good time to actually have a big declutter, a big catch up in terms of making sure that everything's running a bit more smoothly. But in a more philosophical sense, the 12th house sun competing with the 6th house moon could mean that particularly professionally, if there are any people around you who don't have your best interests at heart, they can use the sixth house energy of the moon to nitpick something around your performance, which they're not convinced is efficient as it could be. And because Neptune's so late in the sign of Pisces, uh, right on the cusp of moving into Aries, which it will do next year, that's a kind of ninth house amplification against the twelfth six. So if you are feeling a bit weary, for example, in terms of your uh, physical vitality, it might be because of exhaustion that's come from stress or other demands. So it's a good full moon to think about your welfare, a good full moon to declutter and catch up on the domestic chores, but it's also a good full moon to be aware that not everybody may necessarily be your ally because the collective that's developing in Cancer in traditional astrology, the 12th house is known as the sector of hidden enemies. And it doesn't mean that people are plotting and conspiring, but it means they could. And because of the role of Pluto in your 7th house, the chances are you have been asserting yourself a lot more forcefully recently. And someone may have taken a little bit of umbrage with that, or just may have felt that you've been pushing yourself forwards to gain the limelight in the way that they've been resentful about. So just watch out for those petty jealousies and backbitings because they could be there. And whatever's going on in your situation, whether it is more about your energetic uh, uh, state, you know, whether you are feeling a bit weary or in the mood for some downtime, or you're wanting to be a little bit more virtuous about all those things, Neptune will amplify whatever you're feeling. So it's a very tender full moon, to be honest, by the end of this week. And just anticipate that there are opportunities to still be dynamic because of Jupiter's link to Mars, and there is that lovely accord between the Sun and the Moon at the start of the week. But if you assert yourself very strongly, there may be someone who could resist you, but not in an open way. Because the 12th house is where people will use other tactics. So, for example, secretly briefing. You know, oh, well, you've seen what they've been saying. They don't actually say to you what the issue is. And that's very tricky to deal with. So just be aware of those politics. You can still make progress. There could be a big breakthrough around some kind of network association. Check the finance side of that feels right. And by the end of this week, give yourself permission to have some time out. Have a great week, Leo. Thank you so much for joining me. And please, if you've yet to subscribe, help to grow the channel by doing so now. Welcome, Virgo, to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 17th of June for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon.
We always need to be mindful of your ruling planet Mercury. So on the screen now, you can see that Mercury is in a near perfect alliance with Venus, the planet of relating, but also the planet of loot. It's possible that if you have uh, an interview or you're doing a presentation right at the start of this week, you're going to be able to articulate yourself in a very animated way. And also charm will take you far. Also Jupiter, the planet of growth and good fortune, is forging a fantastic alliance to Mars. If you recall, Mars moved into your sister Earth sign of Taurus last week, but clashed immediately with Pluto. Pluto is the planet of power. Mars is impatient in the ninth house. It doesn't like to be contained. It likes to be a free spirit. And perhaps something that you've been very adhered to and very conscientious about for a, a long time, perhaps that's something that you're wanting to examine and try some fresh approaches. And that could be around your work. In fact, your professional situation, or at least your goals and ambitions, has been a big part of this month's story for you. But you're now set to go through a big change, Virgo, because from the start of the week on Monday, once Mercury and Venus have aligned in Gemini, they move into the sign of Cancer. Now, Earth, as you are, carries water. So there's a natural conductivity between the sign of Cancer and the sign of Virgo. Your precision can flow through the Cancer prism, but particularly around your connections. And over the next month, you've got a glorious opportunity to bring a lot more sparkle and, and interaction to your social world. But also the 11th house that Mercury and Venus move into on Monday can be about our long-term future. It can also be about our higher values. It's not necessarily just about the material world. Sometimes we need to feel things at a heart level. So the people that you really feel that nat natural connection and chemistry with, they're the people who are going to excite you the most over the next four weeks. What's not to like? Well, it's just that Neptune in your opposite sign is providing somewhat of a dampener to the sparkle that initially Mercury and Venus can provide and later on Thursday with the summer solstice the Sun can provide in Cancer. Why is this? Well it's because Neptune is so late in the sign of Pisces we almost have to think of it as being right on the first degree of Aries. So for you that creates an 11th 8th house dimension which can be a little bit challenging because the 11th house is where we want to do the right thing. The 8th house is much more realistic about where we're most invested, but it's not so freedom orientated. And of course, Neptune can be a little bit distorting. So if you're talking about money, for example, Neptune being on that 7th, 8th house cast, particularly around any kind of partnership, do be very, very uh, careful to use your natural position to protect your position. But then Venus and Mercury then clash with Pluto, followed by the Sun. Pluto, remember, is asking you to think very carefully about your obligations, your responsibilities, your, where you're conscientious. And it's pushing you to review those areas. So just as we have that collective of Mercury, Venus and the Sun moving into your 11th house, much more playful, interactive, much more about getting together with people, Pluto saying, but hold on, you were on that strict diet. You were being very virtuous about what you were eating and drinking. But hold on, you could be doing overtime. You could be clearing up those domestic chores. Whereas those three are saying, let's just have fun. So you get a little bit of a challenge around that as well. In fact, by the time we get to the full moon on Saturday, you're going to be so much in demand, Virgo, it's going to be difficult to know who to let down gently. But it's really nice to have options. The 11th house energy is about your group of friends. The 5th house energy where the moon is, is much more about what you need as an individual. But again, Neptune applies to this. So we've got the power of Pluto, could make you feel a bit guilty about not being virtuous. And Neptune in your 7th house can bring issues up about relationships, but I think more about where you could be guilt-tripped a little bit about not quite 
are doing what someone close to you feels you should be doing. But generally, this week starts with a huge opportunity to make a major breakthrough professionally. But as the week goes on, you could find yourself much more in the mood to have some downtime, to mix and mingle, uh, to let yourself go a little bit. But it's important that you don't let Pluto ruin the moment. Have a great week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you've yet to subscribe to the channel, please do so now. Welcome Libra to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 17th of June for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now I'm sharing the event chart for you right at the start of the week. The big takeout is the fact that the Moon is in your sign. You can be a people pleaser, even if that's not so much your focus, you're certainly very attuned to how things appear to others. What the moon in your own sign does is give you a bit more urgency to connect with what you need instinctively for yourself. But the moon also forges an, an amazing link to the sun. The sun in Gemini, house nine, very exciting, adventurous. And all through June so far, you've been pushing boundaries. You've been exploring, perhaps trying to reach new people, experimenting, perhaps you've traveled in maybe physically, maybe in your mind. You've certainly become much more conscious of different philosophies and knowledge. That's created a lot of excitement. So this link to the moon and the sun just gives you a sense of being in touch with all this drama. Absolutely lovely. But let's revisit the very start of last week. Did you as the previous week came to a close, have a big connection with someone in a romantic or, should I say, raw sexual attraction way, wouldn't be a complete surprise. Or was there a clash of wills with someone you're more, more closely involved with, perhaps around money, perhaps you haven't felt as recognized or acknowledged as you should do. The ninth house, which includes your ruler Venus, which you can see from the chart, is right at the top of the chart on the 10th house cast, has been making you much more conscious of your need for fairness. If you are experiencing a lack of fairness, that clash between Mars in your eighth house of long-term money, so that's where you want to feel really validated, particularly at work, if that hasn't been coming back to you, that may have left you feeling quite restive. Now, as we come into this new week, Mars is forging a very positive link with Jupiter. So keep going, keep trying to push your interest, keep trying to cultivate contacts, keep trying to reach the people who will see your situation with greater clarity, but you will need to use diplomacy. But guess what? That's your ace card. And because Venus is the most dominant planet in this week's particular reading and is your ruler, using that graciousness that's part and parcel of you and crafting your language carefully with Mercury's help can really see a breakthrough. Just be aware they're both conflicted by the dreamy influence of Neptune. Neptune for you is in house six. Don't feel guilty if you're standing up for your rights. Someone could try to guilt you out with Saturn and Neptune in house six. Well, that's, that's the way it is. That's just the way we do things. Push back if that doesn't feel right, but push back with your charm because that will spring open the door of opportunity much more effectively because although Mercury and Venus reach an exact alliance in Gemini on Monday, they then later in the day move into Cancer, which for you, the 10th house is how you connect to the wider world. It's goals, ambition, success, and success could well be coming your way, Libra, particularly if you've really been putting in the legwork over the last few weeks. And once Venus and Mercury move into Cancer, let's just think about the archetype of Cancer. It's caring, it's nurturing. Yes, but it's also a cardinal sign like you. Cardinal means leadership. It means authority, but most of all, it means action. Just because Venus is in the mix doesn't mean to say you can't take action. For example, if you're seeing someone and you're really keen on each other and you want to take it to that next level of commitment, the 10th house is the place that you can do it. So your conversations could be about that. 
If you're more focused on trying to get yourself a new job or get your boss to give you greater recognition for how hard you're working, again, it can be your use of language and charm, which are just as important as your talent. But what Neptune can do is just distort things a little bit. So it's very important to choose language with care, but that's something that you have a gift for. Now, the other takeout at the start of this week essentially is that Pluto influence because Pluto is also in a quincunx with Mercury and Venus as they move into Cancer. What this means is the fifth house is where you want to be free-spirited and really radiate your individuality. The tenth house may be where you have to just bend a little bit into what someone else expects from you. So that means that you may have to tailor your output in order to get the improvement in your situation. So if you're a natural bohemian, this week could be more challenging. If you're someone who wants to make it all the way to the boardroom and you're prepared to, in some ways, be a bit more flexible about your personal talents and, you know, conform rather more to the construct that's being offered, that's where you can make significant progress. And that's going to be underlined by the sun traveling into the sign of uh, cancer on Thursday. So for you, the sun goes right to the top of your chart, there for 30 days. This is your chance to really light people up, animate your talents, raise your profile. You can achieve more recognition if you believe in yourself because Pluto is there, the fifth, 10th house energy is not very integrated. But if you can just be a little bit flexing, you've got a great chance. But that brings us to the full moon of Saturday because just as you're making this big push, it could be that someone at home needs your support. Maybe it's an elderly relative, maybe it's your kids, maybe there's some domestic issues that need to be cleared up just at a time when you're wanting to really focus on success. And that's the amazing thing about astrology. We very rarely get everything going completely in the direction we want. There's always some kind of headwind. How do you deal with this headwind? Well, maybe in this classic work-life balance scenario, just be aware that there is going to be a need to flex. But because Neptune also T-squares up this uh, particular full moon, again, it's down to the information that's coming back. And because it's so late in the sign of Pisces, for you, it's really almost on your seventh house cusp. So around partnerships, whether it's a domestic partner, family partnership, professional partnership, you need to be sensitive to the people that you're connecting with and they'll probably give you the support that you require, but they may need some of your support. So you could be a little bit deflected from your worldly aims at the end of this week and for the following two weeks, but equally, it could be that you can really go for it, but then realise you do need the support of those significant others. It's been a great pleasure being with you, Libra. Have a wonderful week. And if you've yet to subscribe, please do so now. Welcome Scorpio to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 17th of June for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now, I'm sharing the event chart right at the start of the week. Now, the most important player in any chart is the most northerly planet. In your case, it's actually Venus. Venus, the planet of relating, in a conjunction with Mercury on Monday. But also, we can see that we've got Jupiter and the Sun in that 8th house too. But the 8th house is very redolent of the energy of your sign, very much about transformations. But down on the 4th house cusp is your modern ruler of Pluto. And if you tuned in last week, you'll know that Pluto and your traditional ruler, Mars, started last week in a mighty epic argument. Now, Mars has moved forwards, but you can see it's pretty close to your seventh house cusp, but at five degrees and 46, so they're no longer squabbling. In fact, Mars is forging a brilliant link to Jupiter in house eight. And house eight can be about long-term money, but it can also be about business. If there is a relationship that's developing in your situation that's very dynamic, 
that's a very exciting combination. So last week started with a lot of tension, I feel, particularly around home or emotional relationships somehow. Or maybe you just felt it within yourself. Maybe you felt conflicted a little bit about where you needed to pivot to support or tune in to other people. But that collective in house eight, the eighth house can be about where we're most invested. So we've got Jupiter, the Sun, Mercury and Venus. Mercury and Venus forge an exact conjunction later on Monday. If you have been waiting for some news on a contractual matter, on some shares, perhaps on a payout, on a pension situation, maybe it's to do with a legacy matter, there could be some good news right at the start of this week, which is exciting. But later on Monday, Venus and Mercury move together into your sister sign of Cancer. The significance of this is the ninth house, which this represents for you, is about travel, but it's also about being a bit freer and independent. It can be about being more adventurous. I think so far, June has probably been quite intense, not necessarily in a bad way. If you are a business person, you've probably been very active, trying to be uh, much more uh, productive when it comes to being entrepreneurial about uh, getting a return on your investment and time. But you could be in the mood, as this week goes on, to have a little bit more space, some kind of escapism. But the eighth house can also be where we're most absolutely committed from a romantic or even sexual viewpoint. And if there is a relationship that's really run its course for you, you may feel it's the time to break free as this week goes on. Will this happen without a reaction? Well, the answer is it's unlikely because Neptune, the planet of dreams, is in your sector of romance along with the strict Saturn. And Neptune's applying to Mercury and Venus at the start of this week and as the week goes on in a potentially distorting way. So if you're wanting to free yourself from something that just isn't working for you, maybe even free yourself from a business relationship, but don't rush it because with all that ninth house energy, the sun, Mercury and Venus, avoidance can be part of the strategy when Pluto is saying, look, there's something burning that does need discussion, but maybe it needs discussion in a very profound way. The ninth house can be profound, but it can be avoiding. It really depends on your unique situation. I hope you have a great week, Scorpio. Thank you for joining me. And if you've yet to subscribe, please do so now. Welcome, Sagittarius, to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 17th of June for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now, I'm showing your event chart right at the start of the week. And you can see there's a big cluster of energy still in your sector of relating house seven. And it's exciting. Jupiter, your ruler, is forging a great link with Mars, the planet of passion. But Mars is in your sixth house, which is about practicalities. It can be a bit more self-sacrifice in there and may have given you a lift of energy since it moved there on the Sunday of the week before last. But it immediately clashed with Pluto. If you recall, the start of last week may have been quite highly charged. There may have been a lot of nervous energy. And if there was a situation where you feel that you've been very committed, tuning into other people's needs, given of yourself in a very faithful way, but it hasn't seemed to have been recognised, that may have caused a lot of frustration. But as this week begins, Mars has moved away from that tension with Pluto, and that alliance with Jupiter is very dynamic. Your practical approach, Mars in the sixth, coupled with an ability to relate, listen and link, can really help you to take a step forwards. Also, the ruler of the seventh house is Venus. You can see that Venus is 29 degrees and 40 minutes, so it's just come into the end of its journey through the sign of Gemini. And I'm really hoping that since it's been there, you have built some new alliances, new connections. It's also very close to the ruler of the sign of Gemini, Mercury, and they come into an exact unison on Monday. So a key conversation could be sparked early in this week. 
Maybe it's someone you've met over the weekend you're going to hear from again. Maybe it's someone that you've known longer that you're building up a greater accord of understanding where each of you comes from. But that won't be the case if you experienced last week someone who really skews uh, their approach to your emotional needs or your domestic needs or family needs because Neptune and Saturn last week were really difficult. So if not every relationship ran smoothly last in the last seven days, it wouldn't be a surprise. One of the things that Neptune does is distorts. So we can think something is how it is, but actually it's not. So the key to overcoming that as you go into this new week is really making sure that your listening skills are really attuned. Try to appreciate carefully what people are saying because your fears could come in, your fears could cloud your conscious reality. But then, as Monday goes on, both Mercury and Venus move into the sign of Cancer. Cancer is very much about nurture. It's ruled by the Moon. It's about security, but it's a powerful sign. It's a cardinal sign. Cardinality is very much about action. So then move in there, house A, is really wanting to take the conversations of recent times and perhaps the pleasant interactions and make them something deeper and more long lasting. But the converse can be true. If you found last week that there was such a muddle with one particular person, your instinct could be with Mercury and, and, uh, and Venus moving and forging a very powerful link to Pluto to think and articulate a need to break free because the eighth house is where we can be very devoted where they're moving in a spiritual sense but it also can be where we can bring something to a close which we're not satisfied with so there's been a lot of talk recently perhaps some very bright conversations and very pleasing ones but now you want to know if there's substance to someone's words and because Saturn and Neptune last week did create quite a lot of resistance and tension around your emotional world. If someone seems to be very good at all the pleasantries but not very good on action, the chances are you will want to start to break free. And the sun's arrival on Thursday in Cancer will help the process. This, of course, is the summer solstice and this brings in Cardinal Quadrant 2, the second 13-week period of the astrological year. If you're down south, of course, this is the winter solstice. Western tropical astrology is a Mediterranean construct. And for you, the sun moving into house eight really gives you a desire to get deep. Now, in a more practical way, the eighth house and Venus, of course, is the planet of money. Mercury, the planet of transactions. So it's the merchant, if you like. Having them in the eighth house in a practical way can be terrific if you're more entrepreneurial. And if you have been developing an alliance with someone and it feels good, it could get deeper and more committed. But again, the converse can be true. But if you're not in any kind of relationship at the moment, don't be surprised if you start thinking more about things like life policies, investments, shares, savings, property and mortgage matters with this eighth house energy that's developing. Now, as we get to the end of the week, the sun gets into a quincunx with Pluto. So again, third house energy, how we think quickly, eighth house energy, not necessarily obvious. It can be subterranean, it's deep. So there may be some dialogue. Is it going to be meaning for you? That's the question that you're asking. And that crests up with the full moon on Saturday. Over the next couple of weeks, if you are trying to reorganize your long-term finances, you still need to manage your short-term everyday budget, which is where the moon is in Capricorn, which is very practical. If, however, it's much more to do with a connection to someone, what you're wanting is a sharing of values, the second house. If you don't get that chime in right, that could be a little bit of a prompt to think about maybe separating from something that doesn't quite work for you. But don't rush to any judgments because Neptune is again potentially distorting things as this week draws to a close and it is joining in with this particular full moon. So in sum, uh, Sagittarius, something quite magical around a relationship could show up at the start of this week 
if there's been no emotional miscommunication or misunderstandings or someone's not been putting a lot of their needs on you and you feel unheard or unseen. If you feel recognised, heard and nurtured, something can go from strength to strength, which is really exciting. Around your finances, this is a time to try to transform things. But also the eighth house can be our appreciation of the whole process of life and death. So a much more psychological phase of the year is opening up as this week goes on. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Have a great week. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you've yet to do so, please subscribe to the channel. Welcome Capricorn to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 17th of June for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now I'm showing your event chart right at the start of the week first of all let's just be mindful of your ruling planet of Saturn so Saturn last week clashed with in turn Venus the Sun and also Mercury they are at the start of this week still in house 6 which is where we need to be virtuous detail uh, attending to our obligations but Saturn in the third house may have meant that there was some innate tension. Also, if you recall at the start of last week, Mars, which has moved into a very passionate and expressive part of your situation, had clashed badly with Pluto. So there could have been something around you not feeling recognised or valued in terms of your talents, or perhaps you were revved up and really attracted to someone, but then little issues seem to get in the way. Later on, as the week developed, it was Neptune in house three, which caused some mischief. And maybe just generally, however much you tried to do the right thing for other people last week, somehow or another, it just seemed to be quite an aggravating week. Well, the great news is that Mars has moved away from that very testing right angle to Pluto and is forging an amazing link to the planet of fortune. So I actually feel that your energy will uh, start this week in a better place. It is true that Neptune squares to the dynamic alliance between Venus and Mercury at the start of this week. So being clear in your thinking and how you express yourself continues to be key. But both Venus and Mercury then move later on Monday into your opposite sign of cancer and for you this is all about relating so the next few weeks can be a fantastic opportunity to align to connect to develop a greater sense of collaboration also some of the things that may have irritated last week you could find yourself letting go and just accepting that we can't all agree on every particular issue and it's not worth sweating the detail the problem, however, is that Pluto, that was in that very aggressive right angle with Mars at the start of last week, applies to Venus and Mercury straight away. And Pluto's in your second house. So the, the one caveat that I would share is that if you're trying to build an alliance with someone where you both have a completely different value system or approach to money, you're probably on a hide into nothing because however much you listen, you give way a little bit, you flex, you try to find the middle ground, that issue could come back. Then on Thursday we have the summer solstice. The sun powers into Cancer. Terrific opportunity because it's joined or joining straight away that duo of Venus and Mercury. So the next 13 weeks your diplomacy and listening skills can take you far. But again, Pluto applies to the Sun in the quincunx, which is 150 degrees. Essentially, Pluto in your second house is making you very aware of the need to value yourself, but also what your values are, but also anything about finance as well, particularly everyday finance. So not the best of weeks if you're trying to forge an alliance in a business partnership, with someone who's got a completely different world view. But if you can connect to someone where there is uh, some kind of synergy between how you go about things or they go about things, even if you bring different skill sets to the situation or you're attracted to someone and there is that spark, but also there isn't that inhibition because you see things like money, politics, religion, children, uh, starkly differently there's a wonderful opportunity to build up some new alliances 
But what about existing relationships? Well, they're going to be tested by the full moon in your sign, which occurs on Saturday. The moon in Capricorn is the weakest part of its journey because it's opposite the sign it rules, Cancer. So it's a testing full moon each year, but for you this year, Neptune is also feeding into the equation and can create that distortion that he did late last week. How do you deal with this? Well, I feel if there is a long-term relationship where you just don't feel heard or recognised or validated, it's something you, you can't you can't deny that reality. So maybe the seventh house energy is pushing you to actually assert a boundary. The seventh house in astrology can be where we do uh, flex, where we do give and take a little bit. And the best of relationships are all based on a bit of that, a bit of compromise. But not too much because then we start to lose our identity. So in any time where you feel you've really tried your hardest to commit recently, and it's still not being recognised, you may want to put down an iron marker of this is what I will or will not accept. So in an ongoing tie, if there have been squabbles, tensions, perhaps about the domestic scene, perhaps little niggles have seemed to have taken hold, however much you want to lean into it and attune to where the other person's coming from, if they're not doing the same back for you, you're not going to be any further forward. So this full moon suggests a weak relationship, to be honest, could make way over the next two weeks. But if a relationship is just pretty normal, it has its ups and downs, it's not perfect, but you do inch forwards every time you have a discussion and find some new ways of collaborating, keep going for sure. And if you meet someone new with similar values, whether it's through work, in terms of a professional connection, or personally, if you share those values, this can be a very enriching time indeed. It's been a pleasure being with you. Have a great week. If you've yet to subscribe, please do so now, Capricorn. Welcome Aquarius to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 17th of June for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now, I'm sharing the event chart right at the start of the week. We always need to be mindful of any planets that are on the angles. And of course, Pluto in your sign, in retrograde, very close to your first house cusp. This is where we manifest our individuality. Now that is potentially going to be a little tricky for you this week because you've had a period in the early part of June where the cluster of energy in Gemini has really helped you to shine brightly. And that creativity, flair and warmth has been something to behold. But unfortunately, last week, your traditional rule of Saturn and the dreamy influence of Neptune both applied a break to the uh, fabulous energy that had been manifesting for you. So you may have encountered some frustration. But the good news is that the moon, you can see, is right at the top of your chart in your sister air sign of Libra. And that's forging a very positive angle to the sun. So if you do need to punch across a message with a vision, with passion, that combination will certainly help. But what about the role of Neptune? Well, if you recall, it did square up at both Mercury and Venus as last week came to a close. And before that, the, the sun as well. So what we've got as we come into this new week is that Neptune's still very, very potent. When it comes to resources and anything to do with buying or selling, what Neptune could do is make you a bit idealistic. The fifth house is where you really want to show that warmth. So just be aware that although Mercury and Venus come into a beautiful alliance, as the week begins, and it may coincide with someone recognising the talents that you have, you still need to stay very clear-minded about value, and value your worth, particularly. But also, at the beginning of last week, Pluto, in your sign, clashed in a major way with Mars. If you felt very frustrated with things in your home, family or emotional life, not a surprise. If you've got contractors in and they're not going at the speed that's been agreed uh, or not even turning up, which can happen, of course, that could have been very aggravating. But Mars retains its place in your fourth house and is going to give you a big 
uh, amount of extra drive to keep moving forwards in getting something physical reformed around where you live. It could even be moving altogether. But it's linked to Jupiter is very, very positive. It's a semi-sextile. That 30 degree angle can therefore see you use the passion of Mars instinctively, emotion, fourth, against Jupiter in the fifth, which is about the potential for risk. So if you've got talents and you're really, really invested in them, keep driving forwards with that combination's help. Your modern ruler Uranus is also in a semi-sextile to the Sun. So again, like Mars in your fourth house. So I guess what they're both saying to you is don't be fearful of showing your emotions, even when it comes to expressing your talent. But that combination of Mercury and Venus on Monday could, as I mentioned, bring some really good news. The Moon feeds into them as well. But later on Monday, they both together move into the sign of Cancer, which for you is how sixth, very practical. But Cancer, of course, is a sign that's very much to do with nurture, it's feeling, it's ruled by the Moon. But it just is, well, they're pushing you to think, Mercury, about your life structure. Venus in the sixth house can be about how you can practically work on your relationships, be a bit more considerate. It could be around the domestic load, taking on a bit more, uh, uh, being a little bit more efficient in terms of your life organisation. If you're someone who likes space, Aquarians often do, a great time to declutter. They're then going to be supported by the sun, which moves on Thursday on the back of that uh, summer solstice into Cancer 2. Brilliant. Three planets together, the sun, the luminary and Mercury and Venus in the sixth house. This is an area where you can want to be more efficient, more organised, but also it's an area where you can apply lots of small but important changes. You know, change your diet 5% in slightly a better way, improve your fitness output 5%, become a little bit more aware of nutrition, exactly what you're actually eating, cooking from scratch, and suddenly you've got a 20% improvement just by looking at the details, which is what the sixth house can be about. The problem is Pluto is very much about you in terms of your ego, the first house, your identity. The sixth house can be where we need to be a bit more sacrificing and supportive of others. They don't quite align, but you can still work very hard. And I think that energy in your fourth house is really asking you to show your humanity and the connection that uh, Venus and Mercury will make as this week goes on with Mars is very, very positive. So if you're wanting to redecorate or to reorder your home in some way, move the furniture around, uh, empty out the loft or the garage or the garden shed, uh, work on your garden in a way which makes things uh, a, a little bit uh, more pleasant to be in. All of these things can bring a, a lot of pleasure, even if they are a bit more practical. But that brings us to the full moon at the end of the week, because that is in house 12. A 12th house full moon is sensitive. And if you are feeling a little world weary as this week draws to a close, one of the things the full moon asks you to do, particularly with Neptune feeding into it, is give yourself permission to have some time out. Whether it is a lie-in, whether it's going for a, a, a nice a sauna, or perhaps going for a steam or a massage, do something for you which is enriching to your welfare, whether it's psychological or physical welfare. And that's a great way to serve that particular full moon. It's been a pleasure being with you, Aquarius. Have a great week. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, please do so now. Welcome Pisces to your in-depth weekly forecast for week commencing the 17th of June for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. On the screen now, I'm showing the event chart right at the start of the week. Now, it's important to be mindful of your two ruling planets, traditional Jupiter, but also the mighty Neptune. I say mighty, not in terms of mass, which of course Jupiter is the big player there, but more in terms of its impact. Because as last week came to a close, Neptune was very active in terms of that. Neptune in your sign has certainly, since 2012, been asking you some questions around your identity. 
maybe the more spiritual dimension has really called out to you. But Saturn being with you over the last year and a quarter has brought an earthier, grittier dimension to bear. And if at times Neptune saw you wanting to be quite escapist or perhaps have time in great peace and tranquility, Saturn may have been asking some quite tough questions and giving you a bit more of an earthy dimension. But last week, just briefly, both of these planets squared up with the cluster of energy in the sign of Gemini, which is the fourth house for you, and that's very much about how we feel about things. And somehow or another, the whole emotional dimension last week, or family needs, or domestic needs, may have just felt really exhausting and demanding. But I'm going to bring you some really positive news as you come into this new week. The planet, which is closest to one of the key angles of the Ascendant, the 4th house, Descendant, and the 10th house, is Uranus. And Uranus is the planet of enterprise, and it's in the earthy Taurus. But it's forging a semi-sextile as you enter this week. If something did feel stuck around that home, emotional, or family matter last week, look at it afresh as you come into this new week. It could unlock a solution. Also, Mars in the same sector early last week aroused a very big psychological energy in its clash with Pluto, which may have seen something come up and get shared which was quite painful. Maybe someone uh, told you something that you weren't expecting, a revelation, even a secret, and that could have rocked you back in your, on your heels. But Mars, just like Uranus, starts this week in a semi-sextile with your traditional ruler Jupiter. So I think where things did feel a bit stuck for some of last week, as you come into this week, there is the potential for something to crystallise more positively around your home, emotional and family situation because Venus and Mercury are so tightly tethered together early on Monday in this sector. Venus in the fourth house is great for redecoration. Mercury can be about how we think about things, but they're both moving into the uber exciting fifth house later on Monday. The fifth house is about joyfulness, fun, sociability it's where we manifest our talent it can be where if we have children their pursuits can also give us a great deal of pleasure too so then moving into the fifth house gives you a chance to reinvigorate uh, the phase you've been going through which to be honest since the start of june may have felt very bogged down a bit inward a bit lacking in the desire to connect and interact socially but it is true that Neptune still applies to them as this week begins. So clarity about what you want still remains important, even though they've moved into a much more uh, productive area. They also clash almost straight away with Pluto. That 12th house energy that came up at the start of last week may be something rather uncomfortable about your past, uh, an attitude or uh, uh, some kind of... Uh, interest or perhaps could I even say some kind of obsession you had with a particular approach to life you're being challenged to face it and release it and actually make yourself available to enjoy life in a freer way and although Pluto does retain its its influence this week both with Mercury and Venus and then from the summer solstice with the sun moving into Cancer on Thursday, it doesn't mean to say that you can't make progress. The planets are pushing you to enjoy yourself more, to embrace that joyfulness as this week goes on. And do you know, there's the chance to do this, not just for the following four weeks and Thursday, but broadly for the following 13 weeks, because the summer solstice brings in Cardinal Quadrant 2, the second of the 13 week quarters of the year. The sign of cancer is also cardinal, so it's powerful, it wants to achieve things. The fifth house is pushing you to manifest your talents, your flair, your artistry, your humor, but also it's the sector potentially of chance, so of speculation. If you are someone who's got an idea that really excites you, then you're being tempted to investigate it. What Pluto's asking you to do, I feel, is just make sure you're clear on your motives. So whether it's someone you're really drawn to romantically, whether it's to do with uh, an attitude that you've 
been perhaps attached to that you know hasn't perhaps been so good for you it might be a bit too much sugar in your food you know where i'm coming from though we all have things me it's calorific goodies terrible got to have the ice cream after dinner and those things are pleasant and good but not if our teeth start to hurt too much so we can have treats but if they could become almost a psychological reliance to give ourselves some kind of up that's where the plutonium in pluto energy in the 12th house is showing itself to you but that fifth house energy that bursts through will give you a more outgoing vibe. Mercury moving into five, even though it's not at its best in Cancer, will see your bubbly sense of humour come through. You can be more flirty. You're going to feel more glamorous with Venus in house five. All good stuff, which brings us to the full moon in the sign of Capricorn. Don't be surprised as this week draws to a close after all oh, the aggravation of recent weeks in terms of having to deal with stuff to do with where you live, who you live with and how, or to do with your inner world and perhaps feeling a bit conflicted about what to do in terms of Saturn and Neptune are asking you to redefine your personal approach to uh, your security. And that's, you know, means challenging what you have. So the cluster of energy moving into house five being faced by the moon in 11, which is how we meet the collective, suggests that you're going to be in demand as this week draws to a close. And as much as you may have felt that people haven't been so attuned to you, or you felt a bit, you know, a bit more inclined to stay with what you know, or even stay in, you're really going to find yourself wanting to be much more playful. So it could be a very exciting full moon for you personally over the next two weeks with some choices. Perhaps those choices are going to be around your love life. Is there more than one person that you're drawn to? There could be one person you find exciting, but you're not sure if they'd be a stable long-term partner. Or is there someone you are with who's on the face of it stable, but there's no excitement? There could be some of that going on and part of what can complicate things is that Neptune forges a t-square with this particular full moon and that's because Neptune is so late in your sign it's on the anoretic degree 29 degrees it's going to move out of Pisces next year briefly into Aries but because it is your ruling planet you can really relate to Neptune but remember nature, Neptune can erode as well as enchant is there something that you need to just let wash away in your world and bring in something new and fresh? Maybe around your social world, maybe around your friendships, maybe around your love life. Or are you clinging on to something because addictively it feels safe and secure, but actually it's denying you having a, a, a sharper, perhaps more uh, challenging in some ways, but a much more engaging lifestyle. So you're entering a time some big questions but some big opportunities thank you for joining me pisces have a great week if you've yet to do so please subscribe to the channel